there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. My warning here is that this is going to be a fun and addictive technique <laughs> because I can tell you that from experience. Now I have some paints and I often don't really use them unless I'm doing gel printing. Um, I often don't pull them out and that's why I just choose to have these little bottles and this is all the paints that I have and I'm going to do a technique today with just paints. We are just going to use paints to create this card. Now in here I have all different kinds of paint. I do really really like the Dina Wakely ones so I've been leaning towards those if I get any new colours. Um, however I have some distress ones. The Anko ones are from Kmart here in New Zealand. Uh, they are all pretty much acrylic paints but some of them are a little more fluid. Some of them are a little more um, heavy bodied like the Dina Wakely ones. And I'm going to use a brayer today because I lean towards uh, less mess is best. <laughs> so I really enjoy just putting some dots down and then all I do is roll my brayer through it. Now if you just roll back and forward you are going to get kind of one pattern. If you kind of lift your brayer then you're going to get more of a spread out kind of pattern. And there is no rhyme or reason to this and this is one of my favourite techniques. I'm starting with pretty much the lightest um, kind of colours, the yellows and oranges and things, and gradually going to move a little bit darker. If you put out a larger drop, then of course it is going to spread further. If you put out a smaller drop, then you are going to get smaller little uh, blobs of paint. So it just depends what you want. It's very experimental. There is no right or wrong. This is a fun, fun technique. I did... A lot of these sheets and then I came back the next day and the next night to just keep going because I was just simply having fun. So uh, that's what it's about for me and although I did enjoy creating these sheets I do need to be able to use them rather than just kind of look at them um, and I did pop one in a little frame on my wall because it makes me happy to look at it. It's a little frame that I change out often um, but otherwise I do need to create cards and things so I do do that too. Now because we are using such thin layers of paint I'm able to layer up blues on top of oranges and yellows. Now usually that would kind of make mud if you put blues on top of oranges. However because we have such a thin thin layer that we are using of these and we're spreading them out really thin um, then they layer up nicely. But you just have to experiment with whichever um, inks or paints or whatever the material is that you're choosing to kind of squish through your brayer, um, yeah, just experiment. And if you are having trouble with it muddying, then perhaps you need to give a little bit of a dry in between some of the layers. Um, yeah, just have fun and try it out. But I know this looks kind of crazy at the moment. <laughs> to me, it looks like a really bright, gorgeous coloured mess. Um, and I have chosen a stencil and then some of the purple that I used on the background as well. Then I'm just going to take a little sponge dauber and sponge through some stencils. Just here, there and everywhere. Still sticking with the paint but going to use some stencils as well. And I'm not introducing any new colours, although there are many, many colours in this already. Um, and of of course I can introduce some neutrals like whites and things as well. So just popping it everywhere, I'm going to cut these up. These are 8.5 by 11 inches um, at the moment and of course this is just a full sheet of paper and I just like doing this because then I can make multiples of cards really easily. Now I have the, this is called the Mini Random Stars, I think this is a crafter's workshop stencil and I'm just going to stencil on some stars in white paint. Of course you could use ink, absolutely. You could also try this technique using re-inkers if that's what you had. I mean, as I said, try whatever you have and um, see how it goes. But for me, it's just really, really nice because there is so little mess involved here and it feels like there's really not a lot gone to waste either. Now I have some Luna paste. This is my favorite because it is the best gold for watering down to do splatters. It stays really bright and gold. And then I'm going to do a little bit through here with the stars. And then I actually end up adding a little bit more too. It has beautiful shine to it once it dries um, and it is really easy to work with. Even though it's a paste, I tend to often water it down, as I said, for splatters and uh, adding it on through stencils and things like this. So lots of different ways that you are able to use it um, other than just using it with a palette knife through a stencil or something like that. So I'm just adding it randomly in all different places. As I said, I'm going to cut this down so uh, I'm not 
you know, I don't have something in mind at the moment that I'm aiming for. But once this dries, it'll be really nice and shiny too. And then here are some of the others I made. I honestly <laughs> just kept going, um, but I just thought I would show you a few so it's not quite so overwhelming. Um, but yeah, lots of different colors. You can see in the middle one, I layered up purples and yellows and things together. Again, that would usually make mud. But because we have used such a thin layer, it just means that they are not going to. Now this is the Downtown Alphabet dies. These are really big and large. And I'm going to show you how I turn um, these backgrounds that I've kind of created into a card. This is going to be a really quick and simple card, but just to give you some ideas. So I love this gorgeous big font and I'm going to pick this out to spell the word awesome. So I am just going to first of all cut this down a little bit because I need it to go through my Big Shot die cutting machine. And then I'm just going to pop the letters down and some of them, I, because I want them them kind of in specific spots uh, just to kind of capture different colors then I am going to put a little bit of low-tech tape this is the mint tape that I'm using um, just because I know that this is not going to rip my project at all um, either what's left or the actual letters then once I have run this through now this die is actually really cool because this creates an outline so it actually cuts um, two kind of of each letter you can see if I pull them out but I want to keep them whole at the moment because I'm going to pop them in this way they're a little bit more bold this way and that's how I want to keep them now this is one of my favorite colors by Dina Wakeley. This is the Night Acrylic Paint. And this is very, very dark. And it's actually a really dark navy. But um, yeah, somewhere in between black and a navy. And I kind of like it because it's not quite as stark as a black. Uh, but I like it that it's a really nice dark background. Now, of course, you could just use colored paper. You could use... Um, inks anything that you have but because I had the paints out and I'm making this out of paint today then I thought that I would use the night as my background again I can just spray it on it's very little mess for me and I'm just going to use my heat gun to dry it because I am going ahead with the project now, now I did just have a scrap piece of paper so I'll cut this down just a little bit um, and keep the scraps for another project but for this one I actually decided to do another slimline card which there might be two this month which is uh which is impressive for me because they're not usually what I lean towards. Now I have some low tech tape taped upwards here so the sticky side is taped up and that way I can line up all my dies. I'm using that line on my um, work surface there to line everything up and of course this needs to be backwards so that when I turn it over and flick it around it'll be the right way around. I'm missing the E at the end because I've already used that in the word and it's nice and easy because it's at the end and I'm able to add it later. So all I do here is flip this around and then pop it down where I think I roughly want it to go because we're kind of going to do a little bit of of die cut inlay I guess you could either do inlay or just put it right behind and uh, not cut out the initial letters like I did above you could just have it filling in the background um, from behind the piece so whatever works for you but once I have pulled that off as again you saw that the tape does not rip at all and that is so important for me um, so I'm going to pop out this little E and then put it back in place so that I can um, do finish off the word now for the top part which is going to say you are awesome this is going to a friend of mine who has just been amazing recently she is just um yeah just one of those people who is awesome and so i have got a little couple of things for her and a card to go with it obviously so i am making a you are awesome if you wanted to you could stamp that up the top but because i'm keeping this to dyes and paint this is the typewriter text the lowercase text and so i'm going to use these to create the words up the top and I like this word even more because I have all of the letters none of them are double ups so I'm going to uh, not run into any issues there as well I'm doing exactly the same technique this is the best technique for lining up dies if you are trying to get them nice and straight I mean it's all good if you're trying to get them wonky that's really easy to do <laughs> of course I find that easy too um, but sometimes I just prefer to have them straight and this is the method that I find the best for trying to make that happen the key is just to make sure that you do it backwards so it's kind of like looking at a mirror because when you flip it around then it will be the right way around and then these are all kind of lowercase letters you could do a capital in the beginning of each one if you wanted to but I just like the look to kind of keep them all the same size and then it really emphasizes the word awesome down the bottom.
So again, I just take off those two end pieces and then just so I can get a better idea of where the dies are, I kind of hold my thumbs at each end so I can make them uh, even. So I hold my thumbs where the dies start and that way I want them even in between uh, all of my, uh, my whole project there. So I'm just going to make sure that I slowly bring this back because I don't want to rip any of those little bits of the letters. And then from here, it is pretty simple and straightforward. There's a couple of things that I always like to do to kind of uh, just add a little bit more to our cards. But of course, these are pretty much always optional. Now I have my corner rounder here and I'm going to just round each one of the corners of the blue. I really love how this stands out. When I put it on the white background, I even just like it just plain as is. But just to jazz it up a little bit, we're going to be doing a tiny little bit of that die cut inlay. And as I said, at this point, if you didn't want to do the inlay, then you could just add it straight behind uh, a portion. Just cut out a big long rectangle and pop it behind the words and that would stop you having to do the inlay if that's not your thing. But for this one, I pretty much had decided that that's what I would do. And then once I have got this down on my card, I'm going to give it a really good press, hold it down for a few seconds, and then I know that it's not going to go anywhere because the matte medium glue is really, really strong. And even better, if it smushes out the sides or anything, it's going to dry completely clear, not shiny, or there's no sheen to it if you kind of move it around. Um, so it is a really good glue for that. I am going to pop in the tiny little pieces on the A and the E. I feel like that just makes the words a little more complete, the letters a little more complete looking. Um, and that's if you can kind of remember to save them and put them in a spot where you definitely will not lose them. <laughs> um, and then for, as I said, the word awesome, I am just going to add the glue and then pop the letters in there. Now, of course, you absolutely don't have to kind of create the big painted backgrounds that we created to do this technique. You could use pattern paper and anything, but I'm just showing you one of the ways that we can use some of those uh, beautiful papers that we created. Now, of course, you could use it as an entire background and then add some vellum circles with sentiment stamped on the front. You could uh, cut leaves out of this. In fact, that might be something that I might do soon. Um, I can just see so many different uses for these, and I had so much fun creating them without a whole lot of mess really um, so yeah I hope that you have kind of enjoyed seeing the process of them if you end up making some of these yourself or you have your own version then I would love to see it and the best place to do that is over on our Facebook group the Facebook group is called come crafting with Natasha and I will leave a link to that down in the description box below or otherwise you can just search for it on Facebook make sure that you answer the couple of questions so that we know you're not just uh, bots trying to get into our group and then we are actual beautiful humans I have links to all of the products used in the description box below. I also have a snail mail address if you would like to send me a card that you have created. I absolutely love and appreciate getting those in the mail. That is always a highlight for my week. Um, so everything is down there, all of the information that you need um, if you are looking for something. But I hope you enjoyed this really pretty clean and simple card today and creating these backgrounds with me. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time. Bye!